We are now joined by Casey Keeler, head coach at Sam Houston State since 2014, national championship coach back in 2020, and a part of the Western Athletic Conference, but one foot out the door, the Sun Belt Conference coming up next. And Casey, thanks for your time. Paul Catalina and David Smoke, we appreciate your time on 365 Sports. Are there, t- are there times this year during this transition uh, eventually to the Sun Belt Conference where you don't even know what conference you're in? Well, well. First of all, we're transitioning to the comp- the Conference USA. Conference USA. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. See, I even, I even. I confused. I thought we were going. I thought we were going to Sun Belt. Well, like, that, 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 that might happen next. I, 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 that's how confused I am with all of this. Sorry about that. Yeah, guys. It's been. You know, I've done this a long time. This has been about as strange a year and as difficult a year because you know, like this is a program that's used to playing for something, and you know, you come here to try to win a national championship. And now when you're not playing for anything, and now you get bumped down to nine games, and then you're in a situation where 15 of our best players aren't playing. You know, and, and so you wonder, like, are the games important? Yeah, the games are important. You know, it's our legacy. Our legacy is that, you know, we win football games, and that's part of our, our culture. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, we finally caught up to us this past weekend where you finally saw with redshirting 15 of our best players and now injuries on top of it, we had two safeties take over 100 snaps when you, when you put them uh, on defense and on special teams. Because we had no one else to play. You know, we were redshirting some guys, and we some guys get hurt. So it's been an interesting year, you know, to try to kind of, you know, pack this thing together then move on to Conference USA next year. Is it is it something that there's not really a moving up playbook for anybody because – Anybody who's doing what you're doing, while the end result is going to be similar, all of your circumstances are different. Well, yeah, you know, first of all, this, this whole transfer portal, that makes you have a conversation with your players more than you dictating, hey, this is how we're going to do things. And quite honestly, a lot of our players wanted the opportunity to play in Conference USA. And a nine-game schedule and not having a chance to play for anything, you know, except for the standard. You know, and we, we've done a good job talking about that, you know, we practice and, and, and we prepare and we play for the standard, you know, all those guys who played before us, you know, uh, but at the same time, there, there's no ring at the end of the day. Now, the kids, the kids they win a ring. Uh, you know, when we, we beat SFA to, to win uh, the Battle of Piney Woods for the 11th straight time and, and the last one ever, I guaranteed our guys rings. And uh, I made my athletic director aware of that after the game. I'm like, you do remember, I promised the players rings. For battle of party with you, yeah, I know. we'll figure out how to pay for it eventually. No, no, but, no, hey, no, hey, no, 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 no. Thank they, we, you we, so much yeah. for bringing that up. Hey, you know, Casey, you know, I'm an <laughs> SFA guy, and you just had to throw that in there. And the last two years, the last two years have been just unbelievable. How you've won those games. Well, no, we've we've allowed him to start it kind of stay close, you know, <laughs> because I just want to torture Colby as much as possible. Oh yeah, he needs it, and all those guys. Yeah, well, I told you, it, the very first question on the interview here at Sam Houston was, do you like the color purple? I'm like, okay, i got to figure this out on my feet. I'm guessing <laughs> we're orange, so I'm guessing there's something really bad about this purple team. So I said, no, I hate purple, would never wear purple, and it's like, you're the guy. Yeah, so there you I go. I think that's how I got the job. So I have to thank SFA for be- wearing purple because I got that question right. God, I wish you would have missed that question, to be honest with you, because you, you have tormented them. So you lost some game. You play a night. It's like a COVID year in a way because there's also other schools who moved out, and then you missed them on your schedule. Is that kind of right. what happened and why you only played nine this year or will play nine? Yeah, with us moving out of the WAC, there's two teams, Incarnate Word and Lamar, that were going to move in the WAC with us, and they decided, hey, if, if Sam Houston isn't moving in, then we're not moving in. So last minute, we're talking in July, they pull out, and now we're stuck with a nine-game schedule. So, you know, the fact that you couldn't play for anything, and then the fact that you're only playing nine games was like, hey, guys, you know, play four and redshirt five. And so that's what we've been, we've been doing. And like I said, it finally really hit us. You know, we've, had, we've won five in a row, and, and I thought we've been playing actually some pretty good football. And then finally last week when you're playing, you know, your center's redshirting, and then the back of center uh, has to play tackle because we lost our tackle at the last minute, you know, ruled out by the doctor and then you have to take a walk on and play him at center. There's a lot of moving parts. And, uh, and you know, it's one of those games where we, we just didn't play well enough and, and we lost. And, you know, the kids were devastated. And I said, yeah, see, I said, this is why we practice as hard as we practice it because it doesn't matter what we're playing for. At the end of the day, 
you know, winning ball games is, is, is a different feeling than losing ball games. And we want to have that experience in that locker room together as a family, win that game. And we dance after we win. We put the music on and, and I call up the quarterbacks or the wideouts or the DBs or whoever it is. And they lead the dance. We have a lot of fun with it. But, uh, yeah, so it's been, like I said, it's been a strange year. And I thought we've managed pretty well. Then last week you finally saw the combination of the red shirting and the injuries. We had guys just playing way too many snaps. And, uh, you know, the other, other thing that I realized was going to be a factor was we've had three bye weeks this year. And so, you, so every time you get in a roll, you stop the season and start over. So you stop and you start and you stop and you start. You can't ever get in any roll. So yeah, we're, we'll be, like I said, I've done this a long time. This has been as difficult a thing I've ever had to work through. And uh, we're, we're excited to get in the Conference USA and get some, some, uh, a normal schedule and, and, and get the, get the thing rolling for next year. Because of the transition and because of the number of games, if you were unbeaten or were you not eligible to be in the postseason? Nothing. We, there was okay. nothing. We, we tried to work it out. Hey, we won't take our scho- extra scholarships until mid-year because we we're going to hold a lot of scholarships anyway until mid-year. No, you can't do that. And this is the thing that the NCAA has to, to understand. We lost an All-American tailback to Kentucky. We lost an All-American offensive lineman to Tulane. We lost another uh, All-Conference offensive lineman to Western Michigan. Uh, our quarterback decided not to come back. To, uh, our All-American quarterback decided to graduate and not come back and play because we weren't playing for anything. So with the transfer portal, never, no one's ever had a transition with the transfer portal. Like when, when you know, uh, Appalachian State moved up to FBS. Those players couldn't transfer sideways. They couldn't transfer up. They only could transfer down to Division Two. Here, we're dealing with a different world. Also, I bet we lost 10 recruits that because we couldn't play for anything, decided not to come to Sam Houston. So you're really kind of hurting our product because we lost players to the portal, and then we also were in a situation that we couldn't recruit players because we couldn't play for anything. We believe next year we're going to be able to play for something. We're trying to explain to the NCA that, like, that old rule – sort of antiquated with the transfer portal you cannot put us in harm's way two years in a row you cannot diminish our recruiting and also put us in a situation that we may lose players because we can't play for a bowl game now obviously playing BYU and playing Houston and playing Air Force and NRG Stadium is really kind of exciting and and I don't think we're going to lose guys because of that but it would be nice to have that you know reward of making a bowl game if we're good enough to make a bowl game coach when you do, though, you know, get able to be, are able to recruit in earnest with everything available to you. How much does it change for you now that? Uh, and I know that you play games, you know, traveling all over the playoffs, but that this conference, before you even get into any kind of postseason, even with an expanded playoff and all that's coming, is you know, it's Florida and it's Louisiana and Alabama and Tennessee, and there's a lot of great talent in all those places that you might be able to go into before that you you wouldn't have uh, in previous years. And, and, you know, we, we will investigate kind of outside of Texas, but being here nine years, I've learned we recruit Texas, Texas, and Texas. And, and we, we make a living in Texas. And if you find someone from outside of a roster, uh, outside of Texas on a roster, they're either a transfer or possibly someone who came to our camp. We went into California. We went into Louisiana. We went into Oklahoma. And it just wasn't as productive as our Texas kids. So uh, we, we really have made a you know, concerted effort to make Texas our base. I always tell everybody the advantage I have over everyone in the country is when I stand you know, on the 50-yard line on, in Bauer Stadium and I draw a three-and-a-half-hour radius around where I'm standing, there's no one who's better at football in America because you can go to East Texas, wow. Down to Houston, it's unbelievable. Out to Dallas, out to Waco. I mean, so that's our advantage. And I think, you know, recruiting Texas, is the way to go, and that's what we do. Kavion Gaither. Would I say ah, his name? What, yes, and he was our man. We did his games his senior year at Connolly. Loved the young man, great kid, great family, and one hell of a football player. Well, and this is, this is the advantage that we are actually going to have going into next year because Trevor Williams, who's our All-American middle linebacker, and Sincere Jackson, who's a great uh, player that, you know, was supposed to go to Temple, then Temple changed coaches, and we got him here because of our great communication school, who's a phenomenal football player. They're both redshirting. So now, Kavion has been put into a starting position. And KG was actually voted uh, the WAC Defensive Player of the Week, like three weeks ago. And so what you're seeing is we're creating so much more depth because of what we're going through. 
So I know it's I know it's been brutal. It, it's been you know not being able to play for anything's hard. But I think it's all going to pay off next year when you look at all the players that have, were forced to go out and play. We have a young man, David Fisher, who's a corner for us. David Fisher probably would have never gotten on the field because of the, the position he's playing. He's starting now. He's playing great. Well, well, he would have never gotten that opportunity. We always say opti- uh, obstacles are opportunities. You know, the obstacle was he had some really good corners in front of him. Well, now that those corners are being redshirted and now he's getting out there and playing, you feel really good that he'll come in and compete for a starting job next year. So I think we're making the best of what is going on. And Redshirt and all those guys have really given a lot of young guys opportunities to get them on the field and play. Uh, Zach Herbacek, a kid from yep. Troy just down the road, another one who is uh, as good a kid as I think I've, uh, you're ever going to meet. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm telling you. And I think uh, the more we give them the ball, the better, smarter we get. Now, we were really <laughs> depleted on the offensive line last week, and that really hurt us. But he had 200 yards the week before. I uh, had, had a – a special, special thing with him uh, last uh, yesterday on the field. He got baptized. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, he was, he was, yeah, he was going to our fellowship with Christian athletes. And, uh, he, you know, said, so Coach, he goes, would you mind if I get baptized in front of the team after practice on, on, uh, on Tuesday? Uh, it was on Tuesday. And uh, I'm like, well, first of all, it's going to be freezing out. But <laughs> I'll, put, <laughs> I'll put a little warm water in there for you. But, yeah, that would be awesome. And he goes, I, w- I want my, my, my parents to come down, I want my family to come down, and I want to be with my football family, and I want to get baptized in front of the team after practice. So we were on the field. It's really cool. You can go on my Twitter and actually see him getting baptized. Um, it, it was one of the coolest moments of my life on a football field, something I'll never forget. Everyone was very emotional. And, again, it's kind of who we are. This is family here. And it was really cool to share that with, uh, with him and, and his, his family and our football family. All right, so I screwed up where you were going, what conference you're going into, Conference USA. <laughs> conference USA is losing players to the American Conference. It, I mean, seriously, is it almost like a, a map that you have to put up on the wall at some point on where everyone's going to eventually be and who's going to be where? Yeah, you know, you just wish you could have a yeah. – let let's all the Texas teams get a great league together. Wouldn't that be pretty awesome? <laughs> oh, how about that? I mean, Oh my God! That's it. but unfortunately that will never happen. And you know we just looked at our schedule for next year as we're talking about some budget stuff. It's like we we fly every game. Louisiana Tech is the only game close enough to us that we will possibly drive. So it's going to be a whole change here at Sam Houston in terms of how how to do things. And uh, you know I, I told our players when we won the national championship, and then you know we had the announcement that we're going to Conference USA. I said nine years from now when we come back. For the, for the national championship reunion, there's going to be 30,000 students at this campus. And, and Sam Houston will be playing big-time college football. And, and it's going to be on the shoulders at what we did. And that's going to be pretty cool. I, feel, I know now we're going through some tough things we got to go through. But really, when you think about it, it's really cool to be part of this legacy that we've built here. So, yeah, Conference USA, it is, uh, it is all over the map, that's for sure. Casey, I have one other question. You mentioned that SFA, and, and again, even though you've dominated that rivalry, we know that that might be one of the most underrated, intense rivalries in a lot of people's minds when it comes to college football. You're moving to a different conference. They're in the Western Athletic Conference. Is there any chance that that rivalry will be renewed at all? No. Now, unless they go FBS, it doesn't make any sense for us to have a rivalry game with a with a opponent that's a that's a step below us in terms of scholarships and those kind of things. I think it'd be bad business on our part. You know, you, you would gain nothing. You know, you're, you're if you win, you're supposed to win. If you lose, it's like oh my god, it's uh it's the end of the world. So, uh, and that's that's why we made such a big deal about this game. Is it was like. You know, the rings that we're getting, it has fourth and forever on because we scored on fourth down. Yep. And forever, we're going to you know have that trophy because when we took the trophy, it was like ours forever. So, you know, it's a shame because it is one of the great rivalries ever. I mean, the intensity on that sideline, I can't even explain it. I always tell the story when I came off the very first time, I, I grabbed Bobby Williams, our athletic director, and was like, you, you didn't warn me. What do you mean? I said, this thing is freaking crazy. Yeah. You know, I told you it was crazy. I said, no, not as crazy as it really is. Yeah. And, and, and like what our alums do, our alums come down on the sideline prior to the game. And so when you're in the locker room, you can hear our alums coming down. And they form a tunnel for the players to come out. And they're crying. And they just want one more snap on that field. And, and like when you go through that tunnel, you realize, you know what? 
you're representing every single one of those guys who played before you. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. And I know we've had you longer than we asked, and we appreciate that. And good luck with all the transition. The, uh, the opening game you played was against Texas A&M. And, of course, at the time, they were ranked in the top ten. And all the expectations. I'm not asking you to talk about what they've been through, but did you ever expect when you played them the season opener that they would be through the season they're having now? We we did not think they were as good as you know advertised. Like people had yeah yeah you know and I don't want to be a jerk here, but we said boy if we had a national championship team we'd have loved to play them. You know I think that would have been a great game because we they just weren't as dominant up front and they weren't as twitchy. You know, it should be a 10 nothing ball game, or maybe even a 10-3 or 10-7 game. At the end of the half, they missed a block in the back, which, you know, should have negated a touchdown. And we, you know, we missed a, we missed a field goal, and we fumbled going in. So it's like we felt that we should have been right there, and we shouldn't be right there with A&M. Not with, not with us red and players and 53 scholarships and all that kind of stuff. We should not be right there with A&M. So, and I had played LSU, I guess, in 2014 or whatever it was. And I remember what LSU looked like, and LSU looked much different than A&M did. I mean, in terms of how they played, I mean, that was a long day. That was a long day playing LSU. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I was not surprised that they struggled a little bit. Now, the thing you have to you know, give Jimbo a little patience here is that, you know, they have a lot of inexperienced players. They're playing a lot of young kids. And people forget how important, you know, that, that – or, or, or how much use can Roy hurt you how important it is to have, have veteran guys. And, you know, when you have, when, when things go against you, the veteran team I had, I mean, we were down three touchdowns against James Madison. We came back and beat them. Because when you have a veteran team and they've gone through a lot, you can go through those experiences. They have so many young players playing for them. And, and he hasn't got that culture there yet where they understand that, hey, it doesn't matter what the score is, we're going to keep on playing to the very end. So, you know, I'm a huge Jimbo Fisher fan. I really am. I think that uh, – you know, he has done a great job in, in all his past experiences. I'm sure that, you know, he'll get that thing right. Sam Houston State, once you get moving, will you play in a, co- a college football playoff environment as the team that represents whatever you want to call that group of five or whatever they're called? Yeah, that's the hope. The hope is that um, the group of five is going to eventually have its own championship. I think that was the big reason we moved. We saw that North Dakota State wants to move. James Madison has moved, Appalachian State got out, you know, Marshall, you know, et cetera, et cetera, Coastal Carolina, Old Dominion. And I think we see that what's going to happen is that there's going to be the Power Five and then there's going to be the Group of Five. And the Group of Five is really going to be like FCS, you know, kind of like, uh, on, you know, kind of on steroids, which you shouldn't be doing that out there, children, no steroids. Um, but it's, it's, and the FCS might drop back a little bit. The concern is that maybe FCS goes down to maybe 50 scholarships. So, People can, you know, make sure they're paying their bills and you have a very broad, diverse group of teams in FCS. So I think we felt we almost had to go to to uh, to FCS and into Conference USA. I know talking to the guys at North Dakota State, they're trying to get in uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, the the Western um, whatever one of the conferences that they're they're close to. Uh, uh, so so I know there and, and there's actually been talk about North Dakota State actually coming in to uh to, to Conference USA. Mm. So uh, I, I think that we'll, we'll have a championship in the group of five here coming up here soon. Very interesting. That's that's kind of we – that you know what? To, to, if they're going to separate in the bigger, bigger, bigger alpha dogs are making more and more money, and we know that, and I don't know if that's good for college football or not, then that has been discussed by us, but we've never actually gotten that deep into it like even you did. Well, yeah, and, and look yeah. – you, you, Coach, you know that as soon as one of you guys from the Group Five gets in there and beats somebody like LSU, they're going to say, "Like, you know what? Uh, wouldn't you guys have much more fun playing each other?" Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's, there's no better. It's the Mountain West. The, the, the um, North yes. Dakota State's trying to get in the Mountain West. They're putting eighty million dollars into their facilities right now. So you see all the best of the best. And they think about it, the last decade: North Dakota State, James Madison, and Sam Houston are the ones who won national championships. Two of us have left, and the third is looking to leave. So I think I think that you know I think the move we made we know it's going to be painful in terms of you know we're a long way from from having facilities that we need to have and and recruiting budgets and all those kind of things but we felt that's what we had to do and so um, there's going to be some growing pains but again because of my location I think I can do it here at Sam Houston. 
Casey, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Casey Keeler, head coach at Sam Houston State. Lots of background on their record.